Hi guys, today I'm going to go through wave particle duality. Prince Louis de Broglie once said, If waves can have particle properties, cannot particles have wave, wave properties? And he posed this question as a student and it earned him his PhD in physics, which is not bad going. And it was confirmed experimentally uh, because you can get electrons to show interference patterns and I'll show you later on in this presentation. And he actually won the Nobel Prize uh, five years after he did his PhD, so not bad going there, Louis. Well done. And this is Louis de Broglie's formula that he came up with. And he came up with the idea that all particles can act like waves. So this is the wavelength associated with the particle. Uh, this is Planck's constant. And this is the momentum of the particle, which is the mass times velocity. It can also be written like this, so I've just substituted momentum for mass times velocity here. So the particle's wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by mass, which is in kilograms, times by velocity, which is in meters per second. Matter waves, the de Broglie wavelength. The de Broglie wavelength, the wavelength of a particle. All particles of matter, electrons, protons, atoms, marbles, and even you and I, have a wavelength that is related to the momentum of the particles by, well, there's lambda, the wavelength, h, which is Planck's constant, divided by mv. So, as the particle's velocity or mass increases, its wavelength decreases. Particles as waves. Wavelength versus size of the particle. In the macroscopic world, for larger mass objects traveling at ordinary speeds, for example the mass of a ball bearing, which is 0.02 kilograms, maybe going at the speed of sound, which is 330 meters per second, the wavelength associated with that particle would be 10 to the minus 34 meters, which is actually 10 to the 24 times smaller than the diameter of a hydrogen atom. Well, the wavelengths are below any kind of detectable limit, so we don't observe wave properties in everyday life. So what about the macroscopic world? For example, electrons. So for tiny particles travelling at ordinary speeds, well, the mass of an electron is 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And maybe it's going just 2% the speed of light. Well, actually, the wavelength that it'd be going, if we put it into the de Broglie uh, equation, is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay, still pretty small, but it's roughly equal to the diameter of a hydrogen atom, and the wavelengths and wave properties are detectable. Now, de Broglie's uh, equation really helped uh, push the model of the atom forward. We had Bohr's planetary model, and... Uh, De Broglie's wavelength equation uh, helped explain uh, why we have atomic spectra. The fact that elements only emit and absorb certain frequencies of light, and it corresponds to the electron transitions between discrete energy at levels. So the question really is, why must the electrons reside in set orbits or energy levels at discrete distances from the nucleus? Why can't they just have any distance? Why do they have to have certain energy levels? So de Broglie's response was the electrons travel in orbit as a wave rather than a particle. Now we've got this quite unusual model here and um, this is representing the wave that the electron has okay as it's moving around. Now if there's a whole number of wavelengths going around our nucleus uh, then that's fine. Uh, the wave won't cancel itself out. But here I've actually got a wave and it doesn't quite uh, add up to a whole number of wavelengths. In fact it's four and a half wavelengths. So as a standing wave it's actually going to end up being out of phase and the wave will start cancelling itself out. Which is kind of an odd idea. The fact that a wave will cancel itself out. Like how can an electron cancel itself out? But mathematically it seemed to work just perfectly. So wrap the wave around the circumference, which is uh, at 2 pi r, until the ends meet. The standing wave exhibits constructive interference 
for an integral number of wavelengths at each energy level. So it has to be a whole uh, whole number of wavelengths at each energy level. If it's not, the wave itself will actually start to cancel. And that's why the electrons can't exist in those energy levels. Now one of the first experiments where the wave uh, properties of electrons were discovered or observed is where you get an, an electron gun si similar to the cathode ray oscilloscope tube and you fire electrons but this time there's a very thin piece of graphite here and as the electron goes through as the electrons pass through uh, they will uh, effectively the thin graphite screen is acting like a diffraction grating and you'll end up getting as electrons come through uh, bands where the electrons form in areas where they don't form. Now on the left here, this is the diffraction pattern that was made by a beam of electrons passing through aluminium foil. On the right here, this is produced by electrons passing through the same foil. So you can see we've got areas where the wave itself is cancelling, the x-rays are cancelling and likewise here, the electrons have also got areas where we've got superposition of these waves where the, the waves will add up. We'll find electrons where the waves add up and we'll find no electrons where the waves cancel each other out. It's just a very weird idea that a wave can cancel out something that's a particle. So we're left with a bit of a weird situation where waves can act like particles and particles can act like waves. So one experiment you can show where light is definitely uh, acting like a wave is uh, diffraction. The interference pattern produced is only produced uh, with waves. But the photoelectric effect, the idea that we've got a photon, an individual particle of light coming in and individual electrons coming off, shows that waves can act like particles. Likewise, with the electron, We've seen that you can have electron diffraction and we can get these rings uh, being produced. And that only occurs with waves. But uh, electrons can be moved by electric and magnetic fields. And that's properties only observed with particles. So we're left with this really unusual situation where waves can act like particles and particles can act like waves. Okay, bye for now.